Welcome to the concept of ethics. Introduction to ethics. Exemplars, ANA Code of Ethics, Ethical Principles, Patient Rights, um, and we're gonna, the outcomes are gonna be describe nursing practice that is consistent with the NA, ANA Code of Ethics, identify the rights of a patient as outlined by the Bill of Patient Rights, and describe ethical principles in healthcare and apply the various patient situations. Ethics is a system of moral standards or principles that govern relationships or behaviors based on professional nursing values and beliefs. Ethics are the standards of right and wrong. Um, they're based on values of the group holding these standards. Ethics develop is, is also the development and study of ethical standards, and that is including the individual, the community, and the profession. Morality is the personal, private standards of wrong and right, and those include character, conduct, and attitude. And laws reflect morals of the society and can be legal, but not moral. Ethics in nursing. Nurses are patient advocates above and beyond. Um, advocate, uh, that means one who articulates and defends another's cause. So on behalf of the patient uh, basis of pa uh, patient values and not the nurse's own ethical or moral values. So that means that, for example, you might not agree with something that the patient wants, but that's what the patient wants, and you're gonna advocate for that patient um, and give them the best options uh, regarding their wants and their needs and their values. Beliefs is a um, supposition or interpretation that one accepts as true. Uh, values, personal beliefs about truths, worth of objects, thoughts, and behaviors. So this reflects the beliefs based on the personal experience, may differ from beliefs of the belonging group, and may be influenced by cultural, social, ethnic, and religious norms. The Nursing Code of Ethics. Um, the Code of Ethics is a general guide for the profession's membership um, social contract between the public and the profession serves. Um, Nightingale's Pledge is one of the first ones that we take as um, nurses. We will say it here. Um, the first code of nursing ethics is used in the United States. Um, so it was the first, it was the first code of ethics was the Nightingale Pledge. Um, today's major codes of ethics include the ANA Code of Ethics and the ICN um, Code of Ethics. Provision one of the ANA Code of Ethics, the nurse in all professional relationships practice with compassion and respect for the inherent dignity, worth, and uniqueness of every individual unrestricted by considerations of social or economic status, personal attributes, or the nature of their health problems. Provision two, the nurse's primary commitment is to the patient, whether an individual, family, group, or community. Let's talk about that. So your patient can be the community. So what's going to be good for the community? We really are getting into that with our COVID stuff. Um, what's really good for one individual might not be good for another, but for our community, we're also thinking of the entire community. Provision three, the nurse promotes, advocates, for and strives to protect the health, safety, and rights of the patient. A couple years ago, we saw that there was um, a lot of hype on the news about a nurse that would not give up blood for a patient um, when the authorities asked for it and she was actually arrested. She was uh, keeping that patient safe. No matter what, they, they thought that the patient was involved in a drunk driving accident, but that patient was a critical patient at this time, and she was advocating for his rights as well. Provision four, the nurse is responsible and accountable 
for individual nursing practice and determines the appropriate delegation of tasks consistent with the nurse's obligation to provide optimal patient care. That means that we can't give the wrong job to somebody. We can't have the CNA do an assessment, but we can have them help complete care. Provision five, the nurse owes the same duties to self as to others, including the responsibility to preserve integrity and safety, to maintain competence, and to continue personal and professional growth. So that means that we actually owe it to ourselves too to stay safe and to stay healthy and to maintain our personal growth. Provision six, the nurse participates in establishing, maintaining, and improving healthcare environments and conditions of employment conducive to the provision of quality health care and consistent with the values of the profession through the individual and collective action. So it's our duty to maintain and improve um, health care environments. Provision seven, the nurse participates in advancement of profession through contributions to practice, education, administration, and knowledge development. So it's our duty, again, to evolve in our profession. Provision eight, the nurse collaborates with other health professions and the public in promoting community, national, and international efforts to meet health needs. We are in this right now in 2020, we are in this with COVID-19. So this is really important for you guys to understand that we are a part of this community and we are pushing for our communal and national and international health efforts. Provision nine, the profession of nursing as represented by associations and their members is responsible for articulating nursing values for maintaining the integrity of the profession and its practice and shaping social policy. We are required, we are responsible for articulating our nursing values and maintaining the integrity of our profession. We are the ones that do that. So now I'm gonna read for you the Nightingale Pledge. This is the original one, I believe. Um, I solemnly pledge myself before and in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to pr practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever it is detrimental and mischievous and will not take or and will not take or knowingly administer any harm harmful drug. I will do all in my power to maintain and elapt the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in the practice of my calling. With loyalty, I will endeavor to the physician in his work and devote myself to the welfare of those committed to my care. Sorry, I was having problems reading this, <laughs> so old. But I wanted you guys to hear that, and I want you guys to know that these are really big things. I mean, that's 1893. Um, those are the things that we need to keep in mind, like, okay, that was our first code of ethics, like, hello. Um, maybe we should listen to that. Maybe we should pick it apart and see, okay, this is how they got the ANA code of ethics. Principles and practices of ethical decision making. We have to start out with autonomy, right to self-determination. Um, inward autonomy is the ability to make choices. Outward autonomy is choices not limited or imposed by others. Uh, patients have the right to determine their own care. Uh, nurses, it's the nurse's honor um, it, to, it, it, we need to honor this principle by respecting the patient's decisions, even if they conflict with our own interests. Um, no one should be treated as impersonal. Um, beneficence requires that one's actions promote good. Uh, this includes the principle of non-maleficence. Um, nurses must do no harm, must uh, safeguard patients, uh, can be a risk for harm in performing uh, interventions and intended for good.
justice is treating all patients fairly in accordance to honor and standards and laws arises when decisions about um, scarce resources must be made. Uh, nurses must weigh out a situation uh, carefully and provide care justly. This recently happened with COVID um, where they had to fit, pick who got the ventilators. Um, how would you make that decision? Um, we think it might be, oh, you know, just ABC, this one's doing worse than this one. But reality is, is that it's an ethical decision that we really have to make sure fits and make sure that the justice is served for each patient fairly. Veracity, telling the truth. Uh, it can be challenging when family members want uh, information withheld from patients. Um, underlying uh, the need for um, to give patients complete information before obtaining informed consent procedures, that's not good, right? Uh, applies to the need for timely and accurate documentation of those nursing interventions. When we're applying these principles, the goal of ethical reasoning process is to arrive at a decision that's in the best it, patient's best interest and it preserves the integrity of all people involved. Uh, nurses must weigh um, competing factors when we make ethical decisions. Uh, we're responsible for the ethical deci uh, decisions and making rational systematic um, decisions based on ethical principles and codes of ethics. Several individuals based nurses um, are usually involved. So patients, families, other family care uh, teams and spiritual advisors might be involved in these decisions. Uh, collaboration and communication is the best and it helps with uh, stress management and um, it's a really valuable skill uh, to have uh, all these in your pocket. In continuance of our applying, your first step is to determine whether or not the moral dilemma exists. When a moral dilemma meets these criteria, it's a difficult choice that exists between actions um, that conflict with the needs um, there are more principles and frameworks that uh, can be used to provide justification for one or more of these actions. Choice is uh, guided by a process or weighing reasons. Decision is freely and uh, consciously chosen. And choice is affected by personal feelings, particular context of the situation. When conditions are met, nurses should proceed with an eth ethical reasoning. When conditions are not met, nurse should refer to uh, professional standards of practice for, guideline, for guidance and determining appropriate choice of action. So what are client rights? Uh, client rights are legal privileges or powers that, that clients have when they receive health care. Um, they retain their rights as citizens and they retain their rights as individuals while they're in the hospital. The client has the right to understand the aspects of their care. They have the right to be active in their decision-making process. They have the right to refuse, accept, or request modification of their plans. Um, they also have the right to receive care from individuals who are competent and treat the client with respect. The nurse's role, um, we ensure our clients understand their rights and that we abide by them, um, regardless of the nursing need, age, or healthcare setting. That's it. Thank you for listening.